Our previous boat before Molly was a Cape Cutter 19 trailer sailor and raising her mast on a tabernacle was straightforward with two people but this was always when she was on her trailer firmly on dry land. The mast on Molly is much heavier and in the first summer we owned her I tried to raise the mast while she was afloat. You can see in this drone footage that it was not easy though we eventually succeeded mostly by brute force. The bowsprit is braced vertically and the main sheet attached between bowsprit and staysail halyard. There are two problems with this arrangement. Firstly, there is a lot of friction which significantly increases the effort needed. It would be much easier to apply the pulling force between the bowsprit and a location in front of the boat, obviously not easy whilst afloat. Secondly, you can see that the mast is not supported laterally, so that the mast foot scrapes on the tabernacle as it's being lifted because the boat rolls as the lifting crew move about. This both makes it more difficult to raise the mast and also damages the painstakingly applied coating. Molly has spent the last winter ashore with the mast down and under cover. I definitely wanted to raise the mast before she was launched. I was forced to wait until a launch day as the boats were packed in too tightly around her to let me raise the mast in advance. Our sailing club is very fortunate to be able to recover and launch boats from the club yard using a Rudberg trailer. Crews of volunteer members carry out this meticulously planned process, but I was quite worried about the wind strength on this occasion. This ferry had arrived in Portsmouth from across Biscay and had already had one attempt at docking. Now, with no less than two tugs pulling, as well as bow and stern thrusters blasting, she was still struggling in the wind. Look at that little yacht on its mooring. I'm very lucky to have had a lot of help on hand, but I now see this task could be done by as few as two people, though four is better. One to raise the mast up, one to ensure that the mast foot is lined up correctly in the tabernacle, and if there's any wind... Two more helpers holding the shrouds to keep the mast on the centre line. The mast is secured with its bolt through the tabernacle, the upper end resting on the winter mast support. I attach one end of the staysail halyard to the bowsprit and secured the other end to a fixed point, the bow roller. The bowsprit is raised to an almost vertical position so that its end is over the bow. The bowsprit stays are attached and tight to prevent any lateral movement which could damage the sprit. The upper shrouds are detached and I have a warp attached to each so that a helper can support the mast and keep it on the centre line to make sure the mast foot drops into the tabernacle without fouling or damaging the varnish. The bottom of the main sheet purchase is attached via a webbing strap to the launch trailer and the upper end is attached to the bottom the side facing our view now, of the bowsprit. This gives a four to one purchase for raising the mast. The stage is now set. Two helpers lift the mast and can move it to port or starboard as it lifts initially, but most of the effort is by pulling on the main sheet which easily lifts the mast up. As you can see the mast had to be lowered again as I had left a tool on the tabernacle. The forestay is then attached and now the mast is secure, after which the shrouds are attached to give lateral stability. It only remains to add warps and fenders and Molly's ready for launch. I was quite concerned in the run-up to this process, but with the preparations I put in place you can see that it was a very easy process in the end. I will add the rest of the rig while she's afloat on her berth and once the wind has decreased and then after that I will check the mast rake, the rig tension before securing the turnbuckles with split pins and she'll be ready for a test sail. Mm -hmm.